Another new feature in Rebel 3 is going to be the masking fluid layer. We're gonna see how those work in this video. Now, in order to get started with that, I have a brand new document open. I'm gonna come over here to my presets. I'm gonna change from Japan to cold press because that's the type of paper that I'm working with right now. And the very first thing that you need to understand about working with a masking fluid layer is that you need a layer. So we're gonna come over here, we're gonna add two new layers. So I'm just gonna click like so. I'm gonna choose layer two. This is going to be my masking fluid layer. It can be named anything. It doesn't have to be named anything in particular. Right now, I'm just gonna leave it as layer two. Now, the reason why I'm choosing this to be layer two is because I wanna show you that I think that the masking fluid layers tend to look better and work better if they're on top of the layer that they're going to be influencing. And we'll understand that a little bit better in a few minutes. Now, the first thing that I wanna talk about as far as brushes go, is that you want a brush that's going to have a high degree of opacity for your masking fluid. So after testing a lot of brushes here in Rebel 3, the one that I found that I think works best for this as far as the default brushes, it's gonna be under the ink pen and it's going to be the reed pen. Now, you could definitely make your own custom brush, but the important thing that you wanna remember about that is that you want it to be as opaque as possible. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna set the pressure all the way to 100. I'm gonna set the water down to one. The reason why is we don't need a lot of diffusion, but we do need a lot of opacity. So I'm just gonna increase that pressure all the way up. I'm also gonna make it a bit larger so that you can really see what's going on as I'm making my marks with this. The other thing that I wanna do is I wanna come over here and I wanna to switch to my color of black. And the reason why is because once I'm done painting this mask, I'm going to show you how you would use it in the painting process. And I find that the color of black is the least obtrusive once we're ready to actually begin painting over the mask. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and begin to paint with this, and I'm just gonna make some marks, something like that, just so that you can see how this whole thing works. Now, once I've done that, what I can do is I can come over here and I can set the opacity of this layer down by moving the slider. So I'm gonna set it down to something pretty low, say somewhere around 20. This is gonna give me a nice gray color. Now, it's important to note that the color here doesn't really matter. You can paint with whatever color you want, what matters is the opacity. And by that, I mean the original opacity before we reduce the opacity of the layer. This is a visual effect. It has no impact on the mask. What matters is the opacity of the stroke because if the stroke is not opaque, then the effect of the mask is going to be somewhat inhibited, meaning that paint can then intrude into those masked areas. So you wanna use a really opaque brush. Now that said, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click the M and this is going to make it a masking fluid layer. So I'm gonna click that. You can see that the layer has become locked and it has this M icon. This is indicating that this is now a masking fluid layer. And you can notice that layer three and layer one both have these dots next to them. And what that means is that I could paint on either of these right now, and these would be influenced layers. Now, if I didn't want a layer to be an influenced layer, all I need to do is just click on the layer that I don't want to be an influenced layer and click on this dot. And you can see that this is no longer here. This is no longer an influenced layer, meaning that if I painted on this layer now, it would ignore the mask. But I'm gonna come down here to layer one, which is an influence layer, and I'm gonna go ahead and begin painting. And typically, if you're gonna be using masking fluid, you're probably gonna to wanna to be using some type of watery medium because that's typically what we would use masking fluid with. And I'm gonna go ahead and just switch over to some colors. So what I'll do first of all is I'll pause, I'll come over here and maybe grab some green and just paint in some green, and then maybe I'll grab some red and paint in some red just so that we have a nice blend of colors and something that's going to diffuse. And we'll see how this works. And first of all, you can see that the brush does not intrude into those areas. But then when we go to diffuse, and I'll just come over here to my tilt, and you can see that if I turn on my tilt and I allow this to really tilt down, it's going to diffuse, but it's going to hit that area and it's going to stop. So we'll see how this plays out. So I'm gonna click that to let this diffuse. And you can see that it's beginning to diffuse down and it's going to hit that and then it's gonna stop. You can see how the drip stopped and then it just kind of went sideways along the border of that. So. This is very much true to life as far as the way that masking fluid works in the real world. This is a really nice thing. Now that said, once we've got this the way that we want it, let's say that for some reason, I wanted to go ahead and I'll just dry this real quick. I wanted to go ahead and add to this masking fluid layer so that I could then paint further applications of color over the top of the color I have here. Well, all I need to do is I just come over here and I just come over and click the M icon. That'll get rid of the lock and the M at the same time. And now if I switch back over to my black, and I go back over here to my reed, I'm gonna go ahead and just paint right on that layer, just like I did before, something like this. And the nice thing about this is that by painting this right over the top, and again, the color doesn't matter here, what matters is the idea of the opacity, is we've added to that mask. So now, once I'm done with that, I just click the M to make this the masking fluid layer again. 
I come back down here to my influence layer, which is layer one. And maybe I'll grab some different colors this time. Maybe I'll grab a blue, you know, something nice and saturated. Maybe I'll turn off the diffusion on this. And I'll go ahead and just paint this right over the top like so and let that diffuse. And what you'll see is that it allows me to have that second mask that I painted into the masking fluid layer. So the point is, is that you can edit these masking fluid layers at any point in time you want to add to them. And then once you're satisfied with the effect that you want, and I'm just gonna come over here and dry this so that we can see this, all you need to do to see what this looks like without the masking fluid layer visible is just turn off the eye. And you can see that in the areas where we had the initial mask, we have white paper still. And in the areas where we drew the secondary mask over the top of the initial mask, you can see that we have some of the paint that we painted down right there. So this is really nice for generating really complex masking effects. Now, another important thing to understand is the idea that we can have more than one mask at a time. So I've got this mask here for layer two, but if I wanted to make layer three a mask as well, all I need to do is come up here to layer three, and I'm gonna come over and grab the ink pen again, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick a black color again, and I'm gonna go ahead and just paint right over the top of this layer three. Now, once that's done, all I need to do is come over here and do the same thing I did before. I'll just come down and reduce the opacity to something like 20%. Click on the M to make this a masking layer. And now that I've got that, I can come back over here to my influence layer and I'll go ahead and grab some watercolor again. And maybe this time I'll grab, oh, maybe something like a magenta color. And I'll go ahead and paint this in. And what you can see is that it's going to respect both masks at the same time. So the idea here is that I can have layer three mask and layer two mask interactively working on any influenced layers that I choose to paint on. So this is really, really nice and very flexible. And again, all you need to do is just come over here. I'll dry that real quick. If you don't wanna see what the masks look like in terms of getting them off of your painting, all you need to do is come over here, turn off the visibility on one or either in order to see the final results of your mask. So you can see that we're getting very complex layering effects here by using the mask in combination with multiple layers of paint. Now, that said, the important thing to understand, if you do not want a layer mask to have any kind of influence on an influence layer, all you need to do is do what I did here. You turn off the visibility on that. So let me just come over here real quick. I'm gonna turn the visibility on layer two back on, but we're not gonna turn the visibility of layer three on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get something like say, maybe a nice bright yellow. I'm gonna go ahead and paint and I'm gonna paint right over the top of where that mask was on layer three. Even though it's set to a masking layer, because it's not currently visible, meaning the eye icon is turned off, this masking layer has no impact whatsoever, and it's basically ignored, whereas the visible mask is still respected. So the idea here is that if you want to keep a layer mask, you don't wanna delete it, but at the same time, you don't wanna actually have it in effect. All you need to do is simply turn off the eye on that layer mask layer, and it will not be in effect for the brush strokes that you're about to make. And so again, all you need to do is just go ahead and dry that, turn that back on, and now if I were to paint with another color, it would be right back in effect like it was before, and you can see it masked that out very nicely. So you can build up really complex effects. You can have as many masking layers as you want. You can have them active or not by simply turning on the eye, and you can have whatever layers you want set to an influence layer. Now, once you're done with your masking layers, you can simply turn them off, or if you wanna get rid of them, what you need to do is you need to click on the layer, click the M to unlock the layer, and I'll do that for both of these guys, and then just go ahead and come over here and click the minus key to get rid of them like any layer, and that will allow you to clear any kind of mask that you might have in your document, and now you can paint as if you have no masking whatsoever. And as a matter of fact, you can see that the influence layer dot is grayed out, and the reason why is because there's no mask, so therefore there's nothing to influence the influenced layer.